I mean it. We gotta grind for it. For his work. One mind. One body. One spirit. Understand that. Hey, soldier. Shalom. Keep this word in my mind, grind hard every day, studying with the wise, to sharpen up my mind frame. If you want it, gotta ask for it, if you need it, gotta ask for it. Keep his word, gotta grind for it, keep his word, gotta grind for it. Grind for it, 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 grind for it. Like a train, my grind is ridiculous. Sweet, I do not need the ish. Had to live with the air. Was sick of the idleness. Considering slugger is now providing and gathering. Arising, no more slumbering. Hands, little folded, doing it mighty. Want to be rich, diligent. diligent. No lagging, no slacking, acquainting myself with the proverbs of Solomon. Solomon. I went by the feel of a man with no overseer. No, she's pulled over with thorns from sleep. No, no, no. Had to consider the deal. Roll, roll, roll. Deliver myself from the hunter. Yeah, I'm being hunted. Gotta stay humble. Can't be no slugger. If so, can't see the mother. Mother, 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 mother. <laughs> Keep his word in my mind. Grind hard every day. Studying with the wise. To sharpen them on my frame. If you want it, gotta ask for it. If you need it, gotta ask for it. Keep his word, gotta grind for it. Keep his word, gotta grind for it. Grind for it. Grind for it, 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 grind for it. One mind, one body, one accord. You gotta grind for one mind, one body, one accord. You gotta grind for it. Grind for it. Study his word. Gotta put in that time for it. Keep his commandments. I know that I can't ignore it. I almost lost my life, and I know that I can't afford it. Christ is coming back, and he know that I know his judgment. So Excuse me, Yanzo. Do you see the prophets out here with the gospel? You think that we playing or something? We playing or something? You see the army, and yeah, we the sons of God, and we stand for something. Israel. Just to have power with God and man prevail. You know the Israel of flex on them. Jesus ain't mad because I know why they raging. They yeah. know the most high God. Yeah. So step on them, step on them, step on them, step on them. Step on them, yeah. Step on them, yeah. Step on them, 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 yeah. Step on them, yeah. Step on them, yeah. Step on them, yeah. Step on them, 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 uh huh. Step on his arm, step on his legs, step on his chest, step on his head. Let me just beat him in back of the head and remind about all of the things that he did. How they made did me in front of my children, how they made kill me in front of my kin. Wait on that, no weapon formed against me. They did it before, but won't do it again. Only did that cause the wages of sin. Now that I got me a chance to repent, getting no scripts, may I vent. We up next, excuse my bitch. We the ones tossed like a ball in the sea. We the ones came over here and no ships. Back at whip, did you read Willie Lynch? Deuteronomy 28 is proof in the scripts. I keep laws on my lips. I be aware of offense. Stay in the scripts, that's my defense. On Elohim, yep, I depend. Go to the streets, tell them to come in. Pull up with 16, 11. I'm not playing golf, but I put a hole in one. I pull up with prophets, ain't talking about chopping. We using the Bible to shut up the skull. See the prophets out here with the gospel. You think that we playing or something? We playing or something? You see the army, and yeah, we the sons of God, and we stand for something. Israel. Just to have power with God and man prevail. You know the Israel of flex on right. Jesus. They mad cause I know why they raging. Uh -huh. They know the most high God. Gonna step on them. Step on them. Step on them. Step on them. Yeah. Step on them. Yeah. Step on them. Yeah. Step on them. 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 Yeah. 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 Step on them. Yeah.
Esau, hey, Shalom, Israel, Shalom, Most High Christ, bless all praises for righteous music. Don't step on Esau's neck. That's right. I'm also Boaz from IUIC Memphis, and we're back again for four chapters a day. Four chapters a day. Uh, the four chapters we're going to go over is uh, beginning in Luke chapter 22. And we're going to complete John chapter 1. That's Luke chapter 22. And we're going to complete John chapter 1. But before we get started, first I want to introduce my reader. Who's to my left? Soldier Yashar Arye. Show Soldier Yashar Arye is the reader today. And we're going to read the disclaimer. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a non-violent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. It's stated in Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1. So... As we read our disclaimer, we're not a hate group. The only thing that half our people, actually two-thirds of our people hate in the nations is God's laws. That's what they hate. That's what we teach. So we're going to get ready to get started with Luke chapter 22. Let's go. The book of Luke chapter 22 and verse 1. Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. So the Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread is one of the same. Read. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot. Read that again. Then entered Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad. Covenanted to give him money. Read verse 5 again. And they were glad. Covenanted to give him money. So it says here they were glad and covenant to give them money. Why? To betray Christ. Why? Because they had the devil on them. Hold that real quick. Give me Mark chapter 5 verse 9. Mark chapter 5 verse 9 through 15. The book of Mark chapter 5 verse 9. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion. So I'll just give you an example when you get the devil on you or you have Satan on you or unclean spirits. It's one of the same. His name is what? My name is Legion. Read. For we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there not unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. So the unclean spirits are those devils that entered into a swine, meaning one of the same. Read on. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they, and they that fed the swine fled and told it to the city and into the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. And he was possessed with what? With the devil. Read on. And had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. He was clothed what? In his right mind. That's all I wanted. Let's go back. So when you don't have the devil on you, you are in your right mind. When you have the devil in you, or unclean spirits, we're not in our right mind, okay? So, let's read verse 3 again. Luke chapter 22, verse 3. Luke chapter 22 and verse 3. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. So, this devil on, is on Judas Iscariot now, because right now he's not in his right mind, okay? Read on. And he went his way, and communed with the chief priests and captains, how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad. And they were glad. So the devil was on, on the uh, chief priests as well. Why? Because they're not in their right mind to betray someone, to be happy about it. Read on. And covenant 
to give him money. Read. And he promised and saw opportunity to betray him unto them. Read on. In the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye enter into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There, make ready. So, What's going on here? They're preparing for the Passover, okay? Christ kept the Passover. Now, you people that's new online, Christ kept the Passover. If you're a follower of Christ, you should be keeping the Passover. But read on. And when the hour was come, he he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Read. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Read on. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also, the cup after supper, saying, This cup in the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But- which is shed, but is shed for you. So the blood represents the New Testament or the New Covenant. Hold on. Give me John 31, verse 31. So who is the New Covenant and New Testament for? It's one of the same. That's what testament means. It means covenant. John 31, verse 31. I mean, I'm sorry, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Who is the New Testament for? Because because in Christianity they say, hey, the covenant is for everyone. Let's see. The book of Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Read. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You see that? The new covenant or testament is for the Israelites. Let's go to the New Testament. Give me Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel in the house of Judah. You see that? It's for the Israelites. The new covenant and the old covenant, they both was for the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. This Bible was only given to you. But through slavery and Christianity, you believe it's for everyone. Let's go back to Luke 22. The book of Luke chapter 22 and verse 20. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup in the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table. And truly, the Son of Man goeth as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. So the man that was sitting with Christ at this so-called Last Supper, as they, you see in those murals, uh, Christ was letting the other ones know that there's someone sitting right now that's going to betray me. Read on. And they began to acquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. And there was also a stir among them, which of them should be accomplished the greatest. And he said unto them, the king of the Gentiles exercised lordship over them. So the other nations, they exercise lordship over their own people and even over us. Okay, read on. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. Meaning, the benefactors mean that they get benefits for exercising lordship or rulership over the people. Read on. But ye shall not be so. We're not the Israelites. We're not like that. Read on. 
But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that do serve it. Read. For whether, for whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serve it. Read. Is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serve it. So what does that mean? So as you ascend spiritually into these higher leadership roles, you, became, you become more of a servant to the people. Okay? In this walk, as you excel, God promotes you and excel in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You become more humble as a servant to the people and, and what they need. And Christ is given the example of what he's doing. He's the greatest among all the uh, disciples, but he was more of the servant to them and to, the, and to our people. Read on. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation. Read on. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on my throne, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. What, what are the apostles, uh, the disciples going to do? Sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The apostles are going to judge the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians in that day. You, you make up the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. It's time to repent. It's time to come back to God's laws, okay? Read on. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold. Satan hath desired to have you, that he may shift you as wheat. Read. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So when what converts us? Give me what converts us. When thou art converted. Because Peter, which is Simon, he walked with Christ, but he still wasn't converted yet. Okay? He said, when thou is converted, strengthen thy brethren. Psalms 19 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. That's what makes us, that's what converts us. Give me 1 Corinthians 15, 56. That's what converts us. So at this time, even with Simon walking with Christ, he still wasn't converted yet in his mind. Okay? He says, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Read that real quick. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 56. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. The strength of sin is God's law. So that's our strength. That's what he's referring to. You go back to Luke 22. That's what he's referring to. Once you converted Peter, Simon, strengthen thy brethren with God's laws. That's what he's saying. Read verse 32 again. Luke 20, verse, the yeah. book of Luke. Chapter 22, verse 32. Read. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Read. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Read on. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall crow not, not crow this day. Before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Knowest me. Christ told, Christ told Peter, hey, before the cock crow, you're going to deny me three times. Read on. And he said unto them, when I sent you without purse and script and shoes and lack ye anything, and they said nothing, then said he unto them, but now he that has a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script, and he that have no sword, let him sell his garment Read and on. buy one. Read on. For I say unto you that this that is written must ye be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. So in verse 37, Christ is quoting the Old Testament. Isaiah 53 verse, you know, you don't have to go there. Christ is quoting the Old Testament, right? That's what all the prophets, they quoted the Old Testament because the New Testament wasn't written yet when Christ was walking the earth. Read on. And he came out and went as he was, as he was wont to the Mount of Olive, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Read. And he was withdrawn from them Read about on. a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. Saying, Father, if thou wilt be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Read on. 
and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in, in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as if it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from praying, it was come to his disciples. He found them sleeping for sorrow. They saw that, so when you read in the when you read uh, the gospel, this is why the 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 uh, disciples were sleep. They were sleep with sorrow, because when you're down down and and depressed, you know, it could drain your energy. You can go to sleep. That's why they was really really sleepy at this time, because they were sleeping, knowing what was going to happen to Christ. Sleeping for sorrow. Read on. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betray thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. You see that even Christ, Christ put his ear back on and healed him. But what? These people still had Satan on them, what we were just read earlier in the chapter. They were happy to betray Christ. Christ is still doing miracles right in front of these men and healed the man, and but they still want to, what, fulfill the envy, the things that they uh, have about Christ. But it's still going to prophecy what, what must happen to Christ. But read on. Then said Jesus unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which will come to him, be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves? When I was daily with you in the temple, you scratch forth no hand against me, but this is your hour, the power of darkness. The power of darkness, meaning power, the power of darkness. Why? Because who's ruling them right now? Satan? They got the spirit of the devil on them. Read on. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. He said, Hey, that's Jake right there. He said, Man, hey, I, that ain't me, man. Hey, you got the wrong. You are you are know these black people right here. Man. I am not. Read on. And about the space of one hour after, another confidently affirmed, saying, of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Why? Because he had the same accent as Christ. Okay? They sound just like Christ. Read on. And Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. Man, I know not what you said. <laughs> just like we say today. Read on. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the words of the Lord. So, the, so, the, so they caught each other eye. And Christ was looking at him like, I told you. Read on. How he said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Read. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, prophesy. Who is it that smote thee? And many other things, blasphemy spake they against him. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes come together and led him into the council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. Read. And if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go. Read on. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. He says, hereafter, meaning in the future, shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Read. Then said they all, Art thou the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. Read on. And they say, and they said, We need, 
we, what need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. So, all praise to the Most High. That was Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Now we're getting ready to get started with Luke chapter 23. Let's go. The book of Luke chapter 23 and verse 1. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to curse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation. Read. And forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. Read on. And Pilate asked him, saying, Are thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest. Then said Pilate to the chief priest and to the people, I find no fault in this man. So why did Pilate find no fault in this man? Because when you read in the, the gospel of Matthew's, uh, uh, in the book of Matthew's, it's used a word that Pilate knew through envy why they delivered Christ through, uh, to him. Okay? Read on. And they were the more fierce, saying, he stirred up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he was desired to see him of a long season. Read. Because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words. So Herod is a, is a so-called white man. This is Herod Antipas, okay? Herod the first was his father, okay? Read on. But he answered him no thing, nothing. So why did Christ answer no thing? Because his father Herod tried to try to kill him when he was a young when he was a young child. Then Herod Antipas, who did he kill? He killed John the Baptist, okay? So and when you read, matter of fact, give me Luke. Give me Luke chapter thirteen. Read 31 and 32. This is what Christ said about this Herod, Herod Antipas, which is Herod the first son. Okay? Read Luke thir chapter 13, verse 31 and 32. The book of Luke chapter 13, verse 31. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow and the third day. I shall be perf perfected. You see that? So Christ called Herod and the pet to say, hey, go tell that fox, meaning go tell that animal I got work to do around here. Okay? So he has no respect for Herod and his father. So read verse 9 again. So that's why he ain't saying anything. He had nothing to say with him. Luke 23, verse 9. The book of Luke, chapter 23, and verse 9. Then he questioned with him in many words. So Herod was questioning Christ in many words. Read. But he answered him nothing. Read. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. Read on. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. Read on. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together. For before, they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, as one perverted the people. And behold, I'm having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. You see how Esau rolling? Esau knew that he found no fault, but it's the through envy, when you read in Matthews, that he knew that the Jews brought Christ to him. And they had the devil on him as well, like we read in Luke 22. Read on. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him. And lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For of necessity, he must release one unto them at the feast. Read. And they cry out all at once saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder, was cast in prison. Pilate, therefore willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why? 
What evil has he done? You see what Esau said? After all that accusation, Esau still knew the man was innocent. He said, why? What evil has he done? Read on. I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. He said, I'm just going to whip Christ and then let him go. Read. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voice of them and of the chief priest prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. It shall be as they required. As they required. So whose blood is, is, is on, Christ's blood is on? It's on us. Okay, read on. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will, and, and they led him away. They laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And they followed him a great company, followed him a great company of people, and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming. In the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, in the womb that never bare, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other male factors led with them to be put to death. So a male factor is criminals. Read on. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood, beholding, the, beholding. and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ." the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself in us. But the other answering rebuked him saying, do not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed, un, we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man have done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou cometh into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. You see that? So one of the criminals believed on Christ, okay? His faith was strong, okay? And he took blame for the things that he's done, okay? So what did he do? He repented. Read on. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Read. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. So there was an eclipse, okay? So the eclipse. So the veil of the temple was rent, meaning what? It was symbolic. To, there, there was no more old covenant anymore. Okay, the old covenant is about to go away once Christ died. Give me Hebrews. Give me Hebrews chapter nine. Let's read verse fourteen and fifteen. The holiest of holy is the the veil's rent. Okay. The book of Hebrews chapter nine verse fourteen. How much more shall the blood of Christ? who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament. You see that? So he's the mediator for those that was under, he, that was under the Old Testament to bring forth the New Testament. So no more is animal sacrifice is keeping God's laws in the faith in Christ, okay? So animal sacrifice was done away with. That's what Paul's mission was, to tell the Gentiles not to do animal sacrifice and to tell the Jews 
that sacrifice that sacrifice uh, sacrificial uh, offerings are done away with. Okay, let's go back. Verse forty six. The book of Luke, chapter 23, and verse 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. So Christ died. Read on. Now, when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breast and returned. And all his acquaintance and the woman and the women that followed him followed him from Galilee stood afar off beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deeds of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. Read. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. He took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. So this was our custom. Give me that in Deuteronomy 21. Our custom was to perform burial within that day. Okay. So he was trying to do that before the preparation. Deuteronomy chapter 21, I want verse 22 and 23. Yes, sir. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 22. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. Bury him that day. So there's no... See, all this stuff that we learned in, in America, there's no such thing as wakes. There's no such things as, uh, well, they wait on the body for like three or four days. You know, we bury the body that day, okay? That's always been our custom. Let's go back. Luke 22, Luke chapter 23, verse 53. Read that again. The book of Luke chapter 23, verse 53. And he took it down. And wrapped it, wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after, and beheld the sepulcher, and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and rested the Sabbath day. According to the commandment. According to the commandments. Rest of the, this is the New Testament. Rest of the Sabbath day according to the commandments. Okay. Hey, all praise to the Most High. That was Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Now we're getting ready to get started with Luke chapter 24. Let's go. The book of Luke chapter 24 and verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, there they came unto the sepulchre bringing the spices which they had prepared. So the first day of the week, what you call the day, is Sunday. What our people, uh, they go to church on on the wrong day of the week. Right. Sunday, that's the first day of the week. Okay, read on. And certain others with them, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their face to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day rise again. And they remember his words. And returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. And it was Mary Magdalene and Joanne, Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. Read on. And their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre and stooping down he beheld the linen cloth laid by themselves, 
and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. So they were still having doubts, like, did Christ actually rose the third day? So they examined the sepulcher, okay? Read on. And behold, two of them went the same day to the village called Emos. Emos. Yeah, Emos. Which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So they didn't recognize him, okay? So it says here, give me Mark 16 and 12. So verse 15 said, it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding, meaning they didn't recognize him, that they should know him. Give me Mark 16 and 12. The book of Mark chapter 16 and verse 12. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them. You see that? So because Christ can appear in another form, okay? That's why it's talking about Christ appeared in the burning bush as well in another form. Let's go back and read uh, Luke 24 and 16 again. The book of Luke chapter 24, verse 16. Read. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And right. he said unto them. Read. What manner of commu communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk in our sad? So they didn't recognize Christ, okay? Because what? Their eyes were holding, okay? Not to recognize him. Read on. And the one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today in the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. Hold on for a minute. Go to, go to uh, Hebrews 13. Just popped in my head. So Christ didn't make himself known to them. But I'm just going to read, Hebrew, read Hebrews 13, 1 and 2 real quick. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Read. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have uh, entertained angels unawares. Sometimes we are entertaining angels unaware, okay? Coming, coming in different forms and not knowing that. So what does that mean? You better love thy neighbor as thyself. You never know who we're entertaining. Okay, that's very, very important. That commandment is very, very important. All right? Where you at? Read. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 23. And when they found not his body, they came, saying, that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Read. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the woman had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Are not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures. You see, at and beginning at Moses and all the meaning all the prophets in the Old Testament, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So what does that mean? The Old Testament is still in effect. There's many prophecies that haven't even happened yet. Okay, read on. And they drew nigh unto the village. Read. Wh whither they went. And he made and though he would have gone further. But they constrained him saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. So this is Christ right here, okay? They don't know that they're entertaining Christ. Just like sometimes we don't know that we're entertaining angels, like we read in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Read on. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and break and gave to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And he vanished. Now their eyes are open, and they knew that was Christ. And he did what? 
vanished out of their sight. Spiritual power vanished out of their sight. Spiritual power. Read on. And they said one unto another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? So that's what their eyes would open to, open to the scriptures. Read on. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and have appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. So when they went to Simon, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said peace unto them. Spiritual power. He just appeared in the midst of them. Read on. But they were terrified and frightened, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Read. And he said unto them, why are, why are ye troubled? Read. And why does thoughts arise in your heart? Behold, my hands and my feet, that is I myself. So he said, behold, these are my hand and my feet, because they thought he was a spirit, okay? Because some people get tied up on God as a spirit, right? He said, behold, my hands and my feet, that is I. Read. Handle me and see. So Christ for, saying, handle me and see. Read on. For a spirit have not flesh and bones. The spirit does not have flesh and bones, okay? Read on. As ye see me have. Read. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. He showed them their hands and his feet. Read. And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, mm -hmm. he said unto them, have, have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of honeycomb. So verse 41 said, and while yet he did all that, and while yet they believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, hey, give me some food. Read verse 42 again. And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of, hun of and honeycomb. Read on. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So is Christ come back yet? That's prophesied he's coming back in the Old Testament as well to do some damage to this place. Yes, so all things have not been, been fulfilled as of yet with Christ. So what does that prove again? The Old Testament is still in effect. Read on. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, thus is it written, and thus is behooved Christ to suffer, Read. And to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So the southern kingdom get this word first, okay? Beginning in Jerusalem. Read on. And ye are witness of these things. Read verse 47 again. And, the, and that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. Among all nations. Go back. What I read that at last time? That's Luke 20. Read it yesterday. 24, 24. Yeah, read that real quick. 21, 24. So why the, did it say his name among all nations? Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. So the Israelites are going to fall by the edge of the sword. Read. And shall be led away captive into all nations. The Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, we were led away in slavery into all nations. How? By cargo slave ships, sub-Saharan sub slave trade, the Silk Road slave trade. Okay? All nations had us in slavery, and all people are scattered to the four corners of the earth. So go back and read Luke 24, verse 47 again. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 47. Read. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. So repentance and the forgiveness of sin should be preached in his name among all nations because the Israelites are scattered to all nations, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Read on. Beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning with the southern kingdom first. Read. And ye are witness of these things. Read. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem Read. until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany 
and he lifted up his hand and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem and with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. All praise to the Most High. That was Luke chapter 24. So that's the end of the Gospel of Luke. We're going to do the first chapter, John chapter 1. Let's go. The book of John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So let's break that down. In the beginning was, give me that in Revelation 19. I want 12 and 13. In the beginning was the Word. So who's the Word? It's referring to Christ. Read that real quick. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Christ is the Word of God. Okay, let's go back. The book of John... Chapter 1, verse 1. And that word of is, is, a, is a preposition. It means from to. So the word from God or of God. Read that again. And the beginning was the word. In the beginning, Christ was always there in the beginning. Read. The word was with God. Christ was with God, the power, okay? And the word was God. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 1, 24. It says the word was God, Okay. See what that means. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So Christ is the power of, the power and wisdom of God. That's what it's going into. Let's go back. The book of John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. With Christ. The Word was with God. Christ was with, the, with God. And the Word was God. Because Christ is the wisdom and power of God or from God. Read on. The same was in the beginning with God. The same meaning the Word was in the beginning with God, with the power. Read. All things were made by him. Read. And without him was not anything made that was made. Give me Psalms 33 and 6. So all things was made by him. What all things? Everything was made uh, from Christ, okay? Psalms 33 and 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 33 and verse 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them. By the breath of his mouth, he gathered... Oh. Just verse, verse 6. That's all I wanted. Yes, sir. Read again. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth. See that? So by the word, meaning Christ, all things were made. Let's go back and read again. John chapter uh, 1, verse 3. The book of John, chapter 1 and verse 3. All things were made by him. All things were made by Christ. Read. And without him without was, Christ. was not anything made that read, was made. Read on. In him was life. In him was life. Read. And the life was the light of men. And so, the, hold on for a minute. In him, in Christ, was life. Well, so what gives us life? Okay, John 6, 63. The book of John, chapter 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that quickeneth, meaning change us. Read on. The flesh profit of nothing. The flesh, on our, the flesh amongst us, well, the flesh, it doesn't profit anything at all. Read. The words... That I spake unto you. They are spirit and they are life. So the word, this is the word right here. So the words in this Bible get, brings us to life. Understanding who we are and keeping God's commandments. That's what brings us to life. So who is the word? It's Christ. Read verse 4 again. The book of John chapter 1 and verse 4. In him was life. In Christ there was life. And the life was the light of men. Give me John 8 and 12 and the the, and the life was the light of men. Okay, let's see what Christ said about himself. The book of John, chapter 8 and verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Christ is the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, 
He that follow me shall not walk in sin, darkness. Let's go back again. Go to verse 5. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness. Read. And the darkness comprehended it not. So the darkness comprehended it not. Read on. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Read. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. So John came as a witness to bear witness to Christ. Read. That all men through him might believe. Give me Sirach 44. That all men through John might believe because he paid the way for Christ. So I know we got some Christians on my online. You see this all men. Let's see who the all men is referring to. Give me Sirach chapter 44, verse 22 and 23. Gotcha. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 44, verse 22. With Isaac did he establish likewise for Abraham his father's sake. For the, Abraham his father's sake. Read. The blessing of all men. The blessing, the blessing of all men from Abraham. Let's see what the blessing is. Read. And the covenant. Read, and the covenant, read. And made it rest upon the head of Jacob. So all men that came out of who? Isaac. Of right? Jacob. Of Jacob, read. He acknowledged him in his blessing. Read. And gave him inheritance. Read on. And divided his portions among the 12 tribes that he part them. That's the all men that is referring to. Let's go back and read that again. Verse 7. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 7. Read on. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. So John came forth to bear what he paid the way before Christ came. Read. That all men through him might believe. That all men, the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indian, through John might believe. Read. He was not that light. So John the Baptist was not Christ. Read. But was sent to bear witness of that light. But he sent to, be, to pay the way for Christ. Read on. That was the true light. That, is the, that was the true light, which is Christ. Read. Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. That does what? Lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Meaning it quickens, it changes. Like we said, Christ is the word in John 60, 66, John chapter 6, verse 63. That's what quickeneth. That's what lighteth means. It changes us, okay, by doing what this Bible says. Read on. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. So he was what? He was in the world. Mm -hmm. And the world was made by him. So he was in the world and the world was made by him. Read. And the world knew him not. But the world knew him not. Who's, what world is talking about? Jump up to verse 28 and 29. Read out. The book of verse 28. These things were done in Betharborough. Read. Beyond Jordan. Read where, on. Where John was baptized. Read on. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. So Christ is the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. Let's see what sin is, okay? The sins of the world. We're going to find out what world is talking about. The Lamb of God take away the sin of the world. So this particular world is in sin. Let's see what sin is. 1 John 3 and 4. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the breaking of God's laws. Give me that real quick. Psalm 78 and 5. So if sin is the breaking of God's laws, who was the law given to? The book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob. And appointed a law in Israel. So the laws was appointed to Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Since we don't keep God's laws, that's why we went into slavery. The curses are upon us when you read in Deuteronomy 28. That's why we went on slave ships. That's why we picked cotton. That's why we picked tobacco. That's why we're getting killed in the streets because God is only dealing with you. He gave us, we're God's chosen people. He gave us a set of laws to keep and we continue to break it. That's what sin is. Let's go back in, uh, to John again. Verse uh, 10. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, Read. and the world knew him not. So his people, the Israelites, knew him not. Read on. He came unto his own. You see that? That's the proof right there. That's the world that he came into, his own. Read. 
and his own receives him not. And the Israelites didn't receive him. Read. But as many as received him. But those that believed on Christ, read. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. That's why he called him the wisdom and power of God. He gave them the power to, to become sons of God. Give me uh, 1 John chapter 3. So who's the sons of God? Let's see. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father have bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. That we shall become, be called the sons of God. Read on. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. Read. Because it knew him not. Beloved. Now, beloved. Now it's calling beloved. Let's see who the beloved is. Give me that in Baruch. Let's see who the audience is that John is talking about. He says beloved. Baruch chapter 3. 35 and 36. Yes, sir. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, and verse 35. This is our God, and there shall none other be accounted of in comparison of him. He hath found out all the ways of knowledge, and have given it unto Jacob his servant, and to Israel his beloved. That's who his beloved is, Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians. So what is that saying, too? He's telling you in the in the Apocrypha, the Bible was given to you, to us. Let's go back to John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter 3. The book two. of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. Beloved. You see that? Beloved Israel. Read. Now are we the sons of God. Israel, who is the God's beloved, we are the sons of God. Read. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be just like Christ. Let's go back to John real quick. Let's get through this. John chapter 1, verse 12. The book of John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to be the sons of God. You're the sons of God, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians. Okay? We are the sons of God. Read on. Even to them that believe on his name. Read on. Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh. Read. Nor of the will of man, but of God. Read on. And the world was made flesh. So Christ came in the flesh, read. And dwelt among us. And dwelt among the Israelites, read. And we beheld his glory. Read on. The glory as one of the only begotten of the Father. Give me John 3.16. Read that real quick. As of the only begotten of the Father. Read. The book of John, chapter 3, and verse 16. So what I want to prove here, that that's referring to Christ. Read. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what else does that mean? God gave his only begotten son. So that's telling you that there's no such thing as the Trinity. The same scripture that many Christians love to read, it tells you right there in John 3, 16, there's no such thing as the tr Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's telling you right there there's two separate people. Go back and read uh, John chapter... Uh, Verse 14 again. The book of John, chapter 1 and verse 14. And the word was made flesh. Read. And dwelt among us. Read on. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. That's Christ. Read. Full of grace and truth. Full of mercy and the law. That's what the truth is. Read on. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me and is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we have all we receive, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. It says the law was given by Moses, but the grace and truth given by Jesus Christ. Hold that for a minute. Give me, give me wisdom of Solomon 3, 3 and 9. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 9. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. No, for, give me. Uh, yeah, go, keep reading. Keep reading. That's for it. grace and mercy is to his saints. Give and, me one in Wisdom Psalm 415 real quick. Grace and mercy is to his saints. Who's that for? The saints or the Israelites? Read Wisdom Psalm 415. The book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 verse 15. This the people saw and understood it not. Neither laid they up this in their mind. That his grace and mercy 
is with his saints, and that he has respect unto his chosen. See that? Respect unto the chosen. So who only get grace and mercy? Is the Israelites. Grace is not afforded to all nations. Okay, let's go back. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth, meaning God's laws. Give me that real quick. Truth. What is the truth? Grace is only given to the Israelites. Let's see what the truth is. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. The law is, is the truth. So what verse 17 is saying is telling you that Moses gave you the old covenant, but grace and truth, that's the new covenant once, once Christ died. Now you have a grace period. Now you have mercy under Christ where certain things that you did under the law of Moses, it required your own blood. Okay? That's what that's going into. Verse 18. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 18. No man have seen God at any time. Read. The only begotten son. Which is in the bosom of the Father. Read. He hath declared him. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. So, so, so John said, I ain't the Christ. Read. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. So what's going on here? That's going into regeneration. We don't have time for that. That's going into, when you come back on this earth, you don't know who you are uh, in your present life, okay? Read on. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? Saying, Who are you? Okay, read on. He said, I am the voice crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Read. As said of the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, saying unto him, Why baptize thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. Read. He it is, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latches I am not worthy to unloose. So when, when John the Baptist was baptizing with water, they come up confessing their sins. You got to know what sins that you're in to confess. So what John the Baptist was teaching, he was teaching God's laws. But read on. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Read. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Read on. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, mm -hmm. for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. He be, be what? Made manifest to Israel. Christ was made or manifest, made known to Israel, only to Israel. Read on. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Read. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. And same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Read on. And I saw and bare record that this is the Son of God. And again, the next day after, John stood. And two of his disciples, and looked upon Jesus as he walked, and said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and saw them following, and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted master, where dwellest thou? He said, So they asked uh, Christ, Where you live at? Read. He said unto them, Come and see. Read. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day. You see that? And they stayed with Christ that day. So in Christianity, people think that Christ ain't had no place to stay. Christ had a crib, you know, and, the, and they abode with him that day. Read. For it was about the tenth hour. Read on. And one of the two which heard John speak follow him was Andrew, 
Simon Peter's brother. He, find it, he first finded his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Read. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is being interpreted a stone. Read on. The days following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find it Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was of Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip finded Nathaniel and said to him, We have found of him whom Moses in the law and in the prophets did write. Read that again. We have found what? We have found of him of whom Moses in the law. Who Moses in the laws of God, read. And in the prophets did write. In the Old Testament did write about what? Jesus of Nazareth. The son of Joseph. So he came from the seed of man, the son of Joseph. Read. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Read on. Philip said unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Who, who is no deceit, no sin. So he said an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Read. Nathanael said unto him, which knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art son of God, thou art the king of Israel. Read that again. Rabbi, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. Read that one more time. Rabbi, thou art the son of God, Thou art the king of Israel. I had to say that three times so it could resonate with the new people online. He's not the, he's not the king of everybody. The scriptures in the New Testament telling us that he is the king of Israel. He's not the king of all people. He's only the king of one people. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Okay, Read it one more time. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. Christ is the king of Israel. Read on. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believing thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So all praise to the Most High. That was John chapter 1. John chapter 1. So that concludes four chapters of the day. All praise to the Most High for the understanding of leadership that's given to us. Hope you glean some from these four chapters. Again, this is IUIC Memphis. I'm Officer Boaz. And to my left again. Soldier Yashar, yeah. And with that, we're going to say Shalom. Shalom. Frankincense and myrrh, mix it with the word, not the Christian church, Christmas fly. It's alive, it's a bird, watch it float. Noah's all rock the boat. I got colors on my coat like Joseph, this that Holy Ghost, and it's smooth. Get comfortable and true, this a groove. Black unto the ground, guess what we the Jews? That's right, we the Jews, make a toast. From coast to coast, catch the Holy Ghost. This ain't grandma shaking, popping, greasing, baking, all that flexing, faking. Take her to the king and then he take her to the lake and fix her face. Whoa, fix my plate. Whoa, feast days on the weekdays. No diet, that's my cheat day. I need that manna. Color like coriander. Sweetest peach tree, Atlanta. Mountain top, lift the banner. Exalt the bush to shake the hand for the Holy Land. We made her the Holy Sand. Sing songs like a holy band. This ain't about holding hands. This about separation from your present situation. Confederate nations against your race. Innovating Satan is blatant. We've been complacent, complaining, but never taking it face to face. I'm here to plead my case. Yeah, yeah frankincense and myrrh. Mix it with the word. Not the Christian church. Christmas fly. It's alive.